Section 1.4 in our textbook is all about saving for retirement. And as we go through this section, the key idea that you should walk away with if you don't learn anything else from this whole section is that you should start saving as early as possible. If you don't have a retirement account set up yet, you should set one up as soon as possible. Even if you're not working full time, even if you're a student, whatever budget you have, you'll find that over time with the power of compound interest, you can see dramatic results, even with small savings. Now, the way that saving for retirement generally works is unlike in section 1.3, where we had an initial deposit in an account. So we would start with a lump sum of money and set it in an account and let it grow. And then at the end, we would look and see how much interest that lump payment had earned. That was section 1.3. In section 1.4, this works a little differently. Rather than having one single deposit that earns interest, will have many regular deposits. So you would put a little bit away each month or each week or each year. Generally each month you'll put away some amount of money and then over time as your balance grows it will also earn interest. And so because you're putting in money regularly and it's also earning interest, you are growing your balance in two ways and over long periods of time, like the entire length of your career until you retire, you can see dramatic results. So here I've got a little example of what it takes to wind up with a million dollars in a retirement account, which a million dollars sounds like an unattainable goal, but it turns out that with regular payments, it's actually not that hard to reach a million dollars if you're consistent and faithful with saving and saving early and saving consistently. So in this example, what I've done is I've picked three different ages to start saving. So you could start saving at 25, at 35, or at 45. And then we're gonna look at what happens when you reach age 65, which is one common age that some people will retire at. So if you're 25 and you save $300 a month, which may sound like a lot, but if you think about it, that's what a lot of people will pay in a car payment, for instance. So it's within your budget, possibly, especially once you start working full time, um, that number is, is not out of reach. But if you start when you're 25, if you start a career and you save $300 a month, every month consistently, your balance at the end will be just over a million dollars. If you do the same thing at age 35, 10 years later, you don't just have a little bit less in your account, you actually have less than half because you missed out on those early 10 years. And if you think carefully about this, the power of compound interest is especially evident when you have a long time. Compound interest grows dramatically if you have a long time for it to grow. So those early payments you make when you're 25 get to earn interest for 40 years. Whereas if you wait till you're 35, you're missing all of those early payments and that's why there's this huge dramatic result where you end up saving less than half just by waiting 10 years. And then if you wait another 10 years, you end up less than half of the 35 balance. So again, a huge dramatic result because you have less time to save and more importantly, your balance, your payments have less time to grow with interest. And all of this assumes you get an 8% return, which if you're investing in a lot of retirement funds, that's a fairly um, reasonable result. So you can read through this and in this section, we're gonna find out how to calculate these numbers. I'm just giving you these numbers ahead of time to kind of give you a sense of the dramatic results of this. And again, if you walk away with nothing else from this entire class, I'd like you to walk away with this concept in mind and I'd like you to take this to heart. So there's a little bit more that you can dig in to this example. And what I've done here is I've actually split up your final balance. So here the 25 year old starting to save, saves over a million. And the gray amount, 144,000, is the actual deposits that this person makes, the actual amount that they deposit over time. Notice that the 35-year-old only deposits 108,000, so a little bit less. 
and the 45-year-old deposit 72,000, so about half of what the 25-year-old does. But notice that this green bar is the amount that that money earns in interest. And this is where you can see the dramatic results that interest does for you. Compound interest grows really quickly when you have a long time to do it. You see really dramatic results. So 144000 deposited over 40 years winds up earning over $900,000 in interest, um, which is, again, I hope this kind of opens your eyes to the incredible results you can see if you save consistently and you start saving early. The person who waits 10 years to age 35 still earns a decent return. The interest is still about three times the amount that they actually deposited, so they're still seeing good results, but just not quite as dramatic. And then the person who waits till age 45, their interest is still more than what they deposited, but it's not quite as dramatic. So you lose out by waiting longer and longer. So you can run through and look more closely at those numbers. And again, as I said, in this section, you'll learn how to do those calculations to see how that works. But again, it's good to start with this concept of why this is important. Okay, the core calculation, the core concept in this section is what's called an annuity. And an annuity just refers to a series of recurring payments. That's the idea of a retirement account is you make recurring payments, you make regular payments, usually every month. I think every example in this section and on the homework has monthly payments. There may be a couple that change things up, but generally a monthly payment is the standard. That's generally how people budget their money is monthly, and so it makes sense to think about a monthly savings in your retirement account. So there are two types of annuities and both of them are important to understand when we're dealing with retirement, and we'll see why in a second. One is called a savings annuity. This is where you're saving for retirement, so you make regular payments over time, and your balance grows, again, because of two factors, both the deposits you make and the interest that those deposits earn. So that's the one when you're saving for retirement. Then when you retire, instead of depositing money, now you have this big balance sitting in your retirement account, and you could just take that balance out and stick it in a bank account and live off of that. Or what you can do is use what's called a payout annuity, and in this case, you can just start taking regular payments out of your retirement account. Now the advantage here is that your retirement account is gonna earn a higher interest rate than a bank, a regular savings account will do. And so if you leave your money there and you just take out a little bit each month, as you do, whatever's left there, the balance that's still sitting there, as you take out a little bit each month, whatever's left keeps earning interest. And so it turns out that you can uh, still take out more than you might expect because the money that's sitting there is still earning interest as you're pulling money out. So both are important because depending on what stage of life you're at, if you're saving for retirement, you're using a savings annuity. Then after retirement, you flip the question to a payout annuity. And now we start with a lump sum, what you saved. So at the moment of retirement, you have a balance in your account and you stop saving and now you start withdrawing from that and letting the balance keep earning interest as you withdraw. So those are the two important concepts to understand and we'll have a formula for each of them and we'll show how to do calculations with both of them as we go through this section. Um, but you can read through the details a little more as you go through this. So with savings annuities, I've got an example here just running through some basic calculations without any formulas other than the simple interest formula that we had back in section 1.3. So you can read through this. This doesn't use the annuity formula, it's just sort of setting up the concept and getting you used to how it works. But we're not gonna work out problems this way because it would be really tedious. Instead, we have a formula that we'll use instead. So here's the formula, and this looks really complicated, but if you run through a couple examples, you'll find that it's fairly straightforward. And if you look closely, you should notice that there's a lot of familiar pieces here. There's an R, that's the same interest rate we worked with before. So in each problem, you'll have an interest rate that you can earn as you save money. That'll be your R. Again, you'll enter it as a decimal when you actually do calculations. N will be both how often interest is compounded and also how often you make payments. 
So we're going to assume that if interest is compounded monthly, you're going to make monthly payments. Or if interest is compounded weekly, you'll make weekly payments. We're going to make sure those are the same all the time. They don't have to be, but for the simplicity of the formula, we'll keep it that way. Again, most often we're going to use monthly, so these ends will all be 12 generally. But read the question carefully to make sure which value of n to use. And then t is the number of years, still number of years that go by in this process. So this would be the number of years that you're saving. F is still future value. We're still thinking about saving toward a final goal at the end of this retirement savings process. The new piece is this PMT, and that stands for payment. So that's the amount that you deposit each month. That's the other, the new piece to this formula. Everything else is more familiar. So be careful when you're using this formula. It's good to start with when you're simplifying to start by simplifying inside the parentheses, for instance, the one plus r over n, then raise that to the power of nt, then subtract one. So then you get a number here in brackets, and then you multiply pmt by that number, and then find out what r over n is, and divide your previous answer by r over n, whatever that is. So you'll see in the examples, as you watch the videos, you'll see me go through and uh, do the calculations carefully. Just make sure when you're using a calculator, you don't try to enter too much at once because it's easy to make mistakes that way. So in a given problem, you'll have an interest rate, N and T, all those are given. And then the other two pieces, P, M, T, and F, just like we saw with simple and compound interest in section 1.3, we have these two pieces. And so you'll see some problems where you're given the payment amount. So you're told, okay, you can deposit $200 a month, for instance. How much will you have at the end? So you're given PMT, and you're looking to solve for the value of F. That's one type of problem, and you'll see that as we go through this. The other type of problem flips things around and says, okay, we're going to give you the value of F. So we're going to say you want to have $400,000 saved at the end of some amount of time. What payment amount do you need? And so now you're solving for PMT. So again, with these two pieces, you'll see two types of problems, one where you're given PMT and you're looking for F, the other one where you're given F and you're looking for PMT. So just be careful as you're reading through and as I go through the videos I try to make that clear what information is given and what you're looking for. If you're given F and you're trying to solve for PMT you can set it all up using this formula and then as you go through your calculations you'll have whatever number F equals your unknown PMT times everything here in brackets divided by another number and then you can do a little algebra to solve for PMT or you can take this version of the formula where I've solved for PMT for you and you can plug things in there. The downside is then you have to keep track of another formula. So it's really the same formula. All I've done is I've multiplied R over N on both sides and divided everything in brackets to solve for PMT. So this is the only formula that I've highlighted because it's really the same one but if you like using this one, you can use that when you need to. Okay, now as you go through, we're going to see two examples with savings annuities. In this example, you're given the value of PMT. You're told that you can deposit $250 each month, and you're looking to solve for F. So it's pretty straightforward. You just plug everything into the formula. Again, if you want to see the details of how this calculation works, click on the example title to see the video. There's one other piece after finding how much the account will hold at the end of these 35 years. There's another little side note here, and this is a valuable calculation to run, and you'll see me do this often, where we're gonna calculate how much we've actually deposited and how much interest we've earned. If you look back at this example here, that's how I found these numbers, looking for how much was actually deposited over time and then what was left over for interest. So the way to do that is you just say, well, if I deposit $250 each month, and I do that every month, so multiply it by 12, and that's how much I deposit each year. And then if I'm doing this for 35 years, multiply it by 35. So multiply those three together, and the total deposited is $105,000. Which, now that we know how much the account holds at the end, if we know that we deposited 105000 we can figure out what remainder must have been interest, because the rest of it was interest. So if we subtract and find the difference between those two numbers, we learn that it earned 
over $345,000 in interest. So that's a valuable calculation to run just to give you a sense of how much work your money did for you, how much interest it managed to earn for you. There's a little side note here. You may have run across these terms, traditional IRA and Roth IRA. There's no difference for us in this section for doing calculations, but if you're interested in the difference, you can read this. In some examples, I, t I talk about a traditional IRA, and some I talk about a Roth IRA. That's just for your interest. The calculations run exactly the same in either case, so you don't need to worry about the difference for calculations. It's mainly a, a tax question. It, it has tax implications. So if you're actually planning for retirement in the real world, you'll uh, think about whether you want a traditional or Roth IRA, and you can talk to a financial advisor, and they'll talk to you, talk to you about whether one makes more sense for you than the other. Then the second example here gives you the same setup, but in reverse, where now you're given the amount you want to have saved at the end, you're given F, and asked to solve for PMT. So that's what I'm doing here. I set this up, I leave PMT unknown, and then I've simplified everything else here. I found everything in brackets, divided by 0.05 over 12, and I found that that was 1136, etc. And then to solve for PMT, I divided both sides by that number, and the number came up to $440. Uh, as your regular payment amount. And then again, I ran through that same calculation on this example that I did on the previous one. So again, watch the video for these and make sure everything there makes sense. There's another example here that, again, drives home the point uh, to start saving early. And what it does is it gives you two people and their scenario, saving for 45 years, saving for 25 years, and the difference in their situations at the end. And it kind of runs you through some calculations just to compare them uh, to again drive home the point that there's a dramatic result the earlier you start saving. Okay, then the second half of this section, once you understand the first part, this follows a very similar layout. Now we're doing payout annuities, which again is once you start retiring, or once you retire, you start taking out regular payments. So again, we're gonna have a PMT, but this time it's a regular payment that you're receiving. So it's like the account is paying you instead of you paying the account. So it's the same setup otherwise. The formula is very similar. The same pieces are there. Now notice you have a P value instead of F because now it's like a present value. The idea is we're making this calculation as if we have retired today and we're trying to project and think about what's gonna happen in the future. So that's our starting balance. So we're gonna call it P just like present value instead of F. And that'll keep track of whether you're looking at a savings annuity, you'll think of your lump sum as F that you're saving toward. In a payout annuity, you'll think of the lump sum as P that you're starting with, your present value. Again, you can rearrange the formula if you like to solve for PMT, but you can also use this original formula and rearrange and solve for PMT in the middle of the problem. Just like before, you'll see two examples, one where you're given PMT and asked to solve for P. So in this case, you're given how much you want to be able to withdraw each month, and then you can work backwards and figure out how much your account needs to hold in order for that to work. And then you can look at the description at the end of that. Again, you can watch the video for more details on that calculation. And then the other example where you're given the amount that you're starting with at retirement, and then you can solve for what payment you can afford to withdraw. And what's gonna happen here is if you withdraw for 30 years at this interest rate, at the end of 30 years, your balance will drop to exactly zero. So this formula works that out for you. Um, so your balance drops to exactly zero, or it would be if you used this slightly more precise number. So again, both types of examples, one where you're given P and one where you're given PMT and you're asked to solve for the other one. Then this last example is a really, really important one. So make sure you can understand and follow this example because if you can do this one, you can basically do everything else in this section. And this is a realistic problem where you're planning for retirement. Uh, and the scenario here is we have this person who's 30 years old and he's planning this all out. So he's at the beginning of this process, looking forward and trying to plan the whole setup, both the saving and then the payout parts of the problem. 
So he looks forward and says, okay, I think I can retire at age 67, and I'm going to assume that I need to support myself until age 95. So that tells him how long he needs to withdraw payments for. And then he says, okay, I want to be able to withdraw $3,000 a month when I'm retired. When I'm retired, that'll be my budget, $3,000 a month. This is a hard number to come up with because it's hard to project forward 37 years in this case and think about what the economy is going to look like and what you're going to expect to uh, have as far as a budget and expenses. So it's hard to, to come up with this number. But once he came up with that number, then he can work backward and say, okay, again, I'm going to have some interest rates. Notice that there's a one interest rate of 7% during saving. And then after retirement, he's going to move his money into more conservative investments, so less risky ones, which have a lower rate of return, but also less chance of losing everything. And this is pretty typical. As you near retirement, you generally move your money into safer investments, ones that uh, have less risk, lower rates of return, but less risk is important, things like government bonds and so on. So you should go through very carefully and make sure you can follow this example. Basically, there's two sides to it. So it's like doing two problems back to back, where first we're going to say if he wants to withdraw $3,000 a month, earning 5%, and we know from age 67 to age 95 how long he wants to do this, we can figure out what balance his retirement account needs to have the day he retires. And then from that, we can work backward and say if he's earning 7% while he's saving, he's saving from age 30 to 67, and we know what his account needs to hold the day he retires, we can work backward and find his monthly payment. So that is the number that he needs today so that he can start budgeting and start saving, and that tells him what he should save today in order to withdraw later on. Notice that he's saving for 37 years, withdrawing for 28 years, so roughly similar amounts of time, a little longer for saving, but notice that by saving $250 a month, he can withdraw $3,000 a month after retirement. Again, these dramatic results you see if you start saving early and you have a long time for things to grow. At the end of the section here, I show you how to use the TVM solver in the calculator. Again, remember, if you don't have a TI-83 or 84 calculator, I posted a online free version on Blackboard that you can use to follow along with this. Make sure you read carefully through this and follow these examples. It's just a matter of carefully entering the right information in the right place, and I'll leave that to those examples uh, to see the details on that. So there's two examples of that for practice, and you can use that. And then I have a short section on using Excel to do the same thing. Again, if you're interested and you want to use Excel, you can read through this, but I won't take a lot of time in this video to talk about it. Just make sure you follow the example and use the right formulas, and you should be okay. At the very end of the section, there's a little bit on where these formulas came from. This is entirely optional. Um, I would skip this unless you're really, really interested and you're really curious of where these formulas came from, because there's a lot of details that it's easy to get kind of lost and confused in. So I don't want you to spend a lot of time poring over this, but if you're very curious and you really want to see where these formulas came from, I don't want to hide that from you. I want you to be able to see uh, where they're coming from. So you can follow through that on each of them. But again, that's entirely optional, and I would recommend generally that you skip that. So that's section 1.4, saving for retirement. And as we move on to section 1.5, we'll see some similar ideas come back. And what we did here will be important, and the formulas will actually look really similar in the next section.